everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and welcome to the recap of the October 2019 Chemnitz Dialog live stream. Last month we were inspired by this beautiful bee picture that I took when I was on vacation over the summer. These gorgeous pink flowers, the orange of the center, and the yellow of the bee. I used a lot of restraint when we were doing some low immersion techniques this month. Um, and let's go take a closer look at all of the yarn that I dyed. For the main colorway, I wanted to take a nod at the bee. I mixed some pink and orange and used some golden yellow to sort of draw in those beautiful bright warm tones from the picture. And then I used a little bit of our 1% True Black Stock Solution to add these black lines just by adding drops, literally drops of the dye. I didn't want the black to overwhelm it. This was a case where initially I was intending to do more heavy black lines, but I liked the subtlety of those black dots so much that I left it as it is. And so this is a great example of how sometimes you might have a vision of what you want to create in your head, but along the way you'll get something you love so much and it's okay to just stop. I think we used jacquard golden yellow, but it crashed out a bit. I used one tablespoon of the golden yellow in one and a half cups of water. For the pink, I used one and a half cups of water, half a teaspoon of jacquard fire red, and a quarter teaspoon of Dharma fluorescent fuchsia. And for the orange, uh, I did one teaspoon of golden yellow in half a cup of water, and then 10 drops of the jacquard fire red. Now. I mixed these colors multiple times, and that's because I wanted to add more pigment. The reason why I diluted the colors is so that way I was able to spread them out more on the yarn. If I had gone straight in with 1% stock solutions, the color would be a lot more vivid and intense, which is wonderful. We still have saturated colors here, but diluting it lets you spread it out, and then you can add more and more color until you're satisfied with the hue. So sometimes it's worth starting with less color and then adding more versus starting with a lot of color and then you can't take it away. I think that this colorway is a nice subtle nod to a bumblebee. If I called this dancing bumblebees or something, you would see it because you could see the bee and see the flowers and get that feeling. Um, but it isn't literal either. You know I can't leave any dye behind. We had some leftover pigment from that first colorway and I combined it, sort of did this very, very subtle uh, sherbet, almost peach color. And I absolutely love how this one turned out. A big part of me wanted to go wild on this base and add a lot of those pigmented saturated colors that I had pulled some pinks and orange and yellow on top and black and go wild. But again, I exercised some restraint here. I thought that this color was so beautiful on its own as a soft, medium toned, tonal yarn that I decided to set it aside and let this yarn be. I don't always do this. I'm not always able to take that step back, breathe and let the color, a soft, subtle color shine. But this one I think is really, really beautiful and I'm glad that I was trying some restraint. We still wanted to go a little wild and I still ended up pretty restrained, I'll be honest. I added a ton of different pigmented yellows and then a lot of black lines across this. I wanted to go more full on bumblebee, but once again, I liked the effect that I was getting here with I mean, it almost feels like big speckles. Now, the black color did spread out, and so this yellow is less bright, it is more muted, almost leaning a tiny bit green, but it's still definitely a yellow colorway. Um, this is a full-on bumblebee color, but yeah, I, I still think that I was ended up being a little restrained. At this point, we weren't in low immersion anymore. We were more in a full immersion situation. If I had reduced the water level, so we had a lower level of water, when I added the black on, it wouldn't necessarily spread as much as it did, and I could have kept more of that bright yellow behind. 
But nevertheless, I love where this ended up and I think that it is really beautiful. I have to say, I'm a little pleased, which is a sort of weird, I'm a little pleased that I didn't end up going straight yellow and black for the bumblebee. I'm glad that I went a little more abstract, especially I suppose since last month I did sort of a very hand-painted, variegated, repeating colorway, and it was fun to take something with stripes and be a little less literal. Um, not that it's a problem if you were to go literal, I just think that when I'm thinking about my evolution and playing with color and these inspiration photos, it's fun for me to see how I interpret photos differently from month to month. I don't know if any of this yarn is still available in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop, but by the time this recap comes out, it will have already been added to the shop. But don't despair, there are over a hundred skeins of hand dyed yarn featured in Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube videos, and so it's a great way to get some beautiful hand dyed yarn and support the content at the same time. You can find a link to the shop in the video description and iCard. And now it is time for my favorite part of these dialogue recaps, where I feature some of the yarn that you dyed inspired by the same inspiration photo of the bee on the flowers. It's so fun to see what aspect of the photo people take as inspiration as they're picking their colors and their techniques to dye the yarn. If you want to learn more about how people were dyeing the yarn in their pictures, um, a lot of people will post more details in the Chemnitz Lab Facebook group. And yeah, I think it's just so much fun and thank you so much for sharing these photos with me. If you want a chance to be featured in next month's recap, make sure you share the pictures um, of your yarn that you dyed based on the inspiration photo with the hashtag Chemnitz Dialong on Instagram or reply to the inspiration photo with a photo comment on the Chemnitz Facebook page. I always include the links and these details in the description of the live stream uh, video itself. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for joining me for another fun dialogue live stream and recap. I am so thankful that we have been doing this for over a year now, and it's thanks to all of you for requesting that we do something like this together. Thank you so much for challenging me as an artist, as a teacher, as a YouTuber, um, you inspire and challenge me and I really think that doing things like this have helped me grow. And it's so much fun to go back and watch my journey from starting with acid dyes to way back when I was a beginner dyeing yarn altogether. Uh, if you enjoy these videos, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications by tapping that bell icon. That way you never miss a new live stream or a new video because I come out with videos on every Tuesday and Friday morning at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Finally, if you want to help support the content on the channel in another way, I do have a Patreon. You can find a link to that in the video description and iCard as well. And I don't know yet what we are going to be dying in November. I just know that I'm really excited and I hope that you are too. Thank you so much for watching everyone.